So today we have uh, as a guest Benny. Uh, he's a senior technical architect at Jonah Group. While uh, doing this work, Benny also helps uh, to establish the Jonas AI lab to expand into machine learning and deep uh, learning business. I uh, follow them uh, on LinkedIn and they, they are always hiring, so be sure you do the same. <laughs> Fully aware of the blockchain impact on business, Benny has established a strong technical knowledge on uh, Hyperledger and Ethereum by successfully designed and built systems for the medical health record and token exchange. He has a Bachelor of Science and a Master of Science in Computer Science from uh, University of Guelph, where his master's thesis is on AI expert system technologies. Ben is constantly posting AI, machine learning, and deep learning topics on his blog, uh, which is uh, Benny Chung at github.io. You don't have to remember that. We'll uh, post it in our next uh, newsletter. So uh, please. OK. Here you go. Let me turn this off. So uh, uh, after the uh, sci-fi talk from uh, Peter, I've, I don't think anything can match uh, that kind of uh, science fiction type of a topic. So I will try my best. <laughs> I will try my best. And uh, I will uh, try to put in some jokes so that uh, compensating the sci-fi uh, factor right here. And uh, thank you for the opportunity. And uh, uh, this is something that is uh, in our mind uh, recently. Uh, because uh, we are actually doing enterprise uh, system. And uh, I heard the question that's saying, what is enterprise system? It's just a big company that they lead to facing, in, facing public, so that they need to worry about all the privacy of the policy and everything. So uh, uh, our main business is in banking, uh, finance, uh, healthcare. So that's why this uh, explainable AI problem is very important to us. And I will uh, try to uh, tell you uh, what does it mean uh, through this talk? So uh, starting with a comic that uh, it seems to be, uh, we have a professor tonight, we have a student. So uh, it's exactly uh, when you go to a math exam, if you do something like this, I don't think you can actually get in flu, right? And, uh, but in deep learning nowadays, it's a kind of, hey, it's a miracle happen, and then uh, we'll be, we be able to make a prediction. Uh, I don't think uh, we, we, we can let it flu, especially for enterprise uh, system. Uh, I always would like to start in with a philosophical quote. My favorite philosopher is uh, Ludwig uh, Wittgenstein. If you did not read him, do, because it actually helped in computer science, believe it or not. And uh, he's uh, actually a, philosoph a philosopher without a computer, but doing all of the computer thinking. So uh, from his uh, philosophical investigation, to make the talk interesting, I need to bring in lion. Uh, because uh, he is saying something like this. If a lion could speak, we could not understand him. Hey, and uh, you may think that's impossible. Because if the lion can speak in English, I have to understand what he is talking about. But uh, it's not true. Because uh, this is two completely different intelligent beings. And uh, they are coming from two completely different culture. If lion can speak, unlikely that you will be able to understand what he is talking about. And uh, it's not very far-fetched. Uh, just imagine that you're si sitting in a lunch table with two colleagues that are playing World of Warcraft, and uh, they start to talking to each other about the World of Warcraft that you never played before. They are speaking in English. You have no way to understand what they are talking about. So uh, the language itself is actually a, a culture. Um, why is that important to us uh, right here? Because uh, AI is very much like lion uh, to us. And uh, in the beginning, deep learning, trying to explain itself uh, is, is getting pretty funny because a boy is holding a baseball bat. It's funny. A cat is actually sitting on top of a remote control, which is not a cat, right? And the most funny thing is a woman holding a teddy bear in front of a mirror. Well, and uh, this is 2015. Uh, if in 2015, we do uh, explainable AI in this way, we find it funny. But uh, if you take a look at it today, you, your feeling is totally different because uh, Uber car is actually killing a pedestrian. It did not stop. And then Amazon is using a secret AI to do, recru uh, re to do recruiting, but it showed that it's biased against uh, women. So uh, now become less funny, and uh, we can imagine why, because it's actually affecting our life, and uh, there's more and more AI system was being deployed. So, uh, uh, so uh, that's why it become a major problem. 
And uh, you can imagine uh, in terms of the enterprise, right? Uh, Uber, Amazon themselves is an is enterprise system. If they deploy AI, getting this kind of perplexity uh, is going to be very damaging for a long, long, long time. And, uh, and uh, we want to try to avoid that. So uh, we are talking about enterprise, uh, why they are so uh, uptight about explainable uh, AI. Uh, of course, uh, they want to optimize the uh, algorithm, uh, whatever machine learning that they do, they want to optimize it. Uh, not until you be able to understand uh, what is what is doing that you can optimize. Of course, they want to continue maintain and retain. And uh, at the end, they lead to actually putting it into public. Uh, they need to have a lot of accountability and also regulation that they need to follow. In this case, uh, uh, later on in my presentation, that I will go into talk about regulation a little bit more, and I will uh, give you a healthcare uh, example on uh, regulation. But uh, in some sense, that this whole life cycle that uh, a enterprise system will need to taking care of, uh, uh, taking care of uh, explainability. Well, and uh, but uh, before we are getting into uh, the actual explainability, first of all, we need to un uh, uh, understand a little bit about the, there's a two different intelligence scale right here: the human intelligence scale and then AI inter uh, intelligence scale. So of course, at the end, we would like them to talk to each other, like uh, how can you come to this decision? Uh, hopefully, you will be able to make the connections. Uh, in uh, human intelligence scale, that is very famous that uh, we are actually multifaceted, and uh, we have many different type of intelligence that uh, is very well known. And uh, even though most of the computer science that uh, we emphasize in logical and mathematical uh, training, but uh, that actually show uh, intelligence is actually more than just logical and mathematical. Uh, I, and I'm not an expert in uh, psychology or human intelligence, so I stop right here that uh, just saying human is actually multifaceted. But when we take a look at AI, uh, AI itself is uh, very multifaceted too. And I like the DARPA, they actually spending a lot of money in uh, explainable uh, AI that they coming up with this uh, four intelligence scale to measure artificial intelligence perceiving, learning, abstracting, and uh, reasoning. So uh, we were going to take a look at AI history a little bit. So uh, we are uh, they kind of dividing the AI into three waves. And, uh, we, uh, and uh, we will see how each wave is actually improving on this uh, artificial intelligence scale. And uh, this is going to be very important because uh, we want to design system accordingly. The first wave of uh, AI, which I'm coming from, the uh, expert system uh, era uh, is a long time ago. And, uh, and after expert system, there's the AI winter, so uh, we don't get to practice the uh, AI at all, uh, not until recently. So uh, that's a long story. I, I uh, save it until later to tell you the full story of the uh, AI winter. But the uh, expert system is the first wave. So uh, let me give you an example. Uh, the expert system is actually encoding human knowledge directly into the computer system so that you can follow rules to uh, actually uh, do some prediction. So uh, let's say we want to predict the uh, number from zero to nine. So uh, we actually encode the stroke uh, sequence for that uh, number so that uh, you'd be able to recognize whenever you do another stroke that uh, you'd be able to recognize what is going on. But it is very specific, very narrow, very brittle. So uh, for example, the four, that you can see the four can be written in different way then uh, if you don't upgrade your uh, expert system rules, then uh, you cannot recognize it. So um, the first wave, uh, you can say uh, the perceiving is pretty bad and uh, absolutely have no learning, abstracting, uh, there's no, nothing. But it's very strong and as reasoning because, because, because we're actually encoding the symbolic reasoning directly into the uh, AI system so that you be able to uh, do human reasoning very well. So whatever that you do, it explains very well too because it exactly how human uh, was being designed. Uh, when I'm talking about some old AI technology, it doesn't mean it's old means bad. Sometimes it uh, depends on the situation. Old technology is still relevant today. And uh, actually many, many systems that are still uh, running with uh, expert system, like if you do your tax uh, reasoning, that the turbo tax is all expert system was built, uh, built into it. This actually uh, occurred everywhere in the society. 
uh, because of the bad name and uh, people don't advertise, uh, I'm using expert system. They are kind of silently, <laughs> uh, that's, that's a, they are calling it rule-based uh, right now. Second wave, uh, which is what happened today, is uh, characterized by learning, okay? So in this case, that we give a whole bunch of ex uh, example, like uh, Sarah so us that we give example of the driving, then uh, you're coming out with a magical neural network. The uh, bottom row is actually showing the uh, final layer of the neural network that uh, what does it mean by recognizing those uh, digits. And uh, you can more or less recognize it, but it's very, stat very statistical, uh, prob uh, probabilistic uh, in some sense. And um, this wave, that uh, we all experience today is so successful because you'd be able to perceive the environment, you'd be able to do learning. But uh, in terms of uh, abstracting and reasoning, that is still lacking, right? Like the first picture about the comic that, uh, that's saying magic happened and then make the prediction. Uh, it's acceptable in some area, but when you're facing public with regulation, that is totally not, uh, totally not, uh, not acceptable. So I'm coming from the old era and then seeing the current era that I immediately think, hmm, is there a way to actually make both of them working together, right? So uh, it's very natural. And I'm happy to find that DARPA actually uh, producing the first, the first wave of AI is actually trying to balance it out. How can they do that? So uh, based on context. So uh, the magical thing is uh, still using the uh, receiving power and learning power of an uh, example. But at the same time, they also integrating with the contextual information such that uh, it is not only based on statistics, it also based on the stroke sequence so that they are actually being able to explain why certain uh, character was being recognized and uh, it's actually increased the power of uh, recognition. So uh, this third wave is relatively new. And uh, when you uh, go in public and search for literature, it's a very, very few paper is coming out, but it's more and more coming out that, need, that people actually build new network coming along with a contextual uh, reasoning so that uh, it's more explainable. But uh, today I'm not talking about uh, making new network be uh, better. I want to talk about explainability model. So uh, at the end of the day that we want uh, explainable uh, as a quality function to maximize the quality of our explanation. Right, but uh, there's many factors that's going to, uh, going to affect it. And I like to approach it in this way because, uh, rather than telling you all of the explainability technique that you'll be able to read uh, online uh, right now. Uh, I want to give you a framework so that once you understand this framework, whatever technique coming in, that you'll be able to uh, classify them and uh, you know exactly what that explainability is trying to do. So there's many factors affecting uh, explanation. Uh, this, this is actually research coming from uh, Google, and I like uh, this research a lot. So, uh, so I kind of uh, repeat what they are saying, but at the same time, I uh, add in some of my, uh, some of my understanding. Uh, the model matter. So uh, if you have the green model, it's very easy to uh, explain because it's linear. But uh, in real world, uh, usually the model is a little bit more complicated. And uh, also we uh, understand the uh, accuracy and the interpretability uh, uh, is going in reverse. Linear model is very easy to interpret, but uh, usually it's less accurate. Neural network is very uh, accurate, but at the same time, it's very uh, hard to interpret. So the model matter, okay. So you can see the, see the equation, the model matter. Data matter, if you have clean data, of course, it's very easy to uh, explain. They are very cleanly separate the red and green. Uh, with a linear line, very easy to uh, explain. But real world is a little bit more challenging <laughs> and uh, not always falling into the beautiful boundary. And uh, also, this is only two dimension, and uh, we are talking about many, many dimension, no data. So, uh, so a data matter, what type of data that you have. Humans matter, uh, understandable, uh, depends on the level of the human expertise, a uh, no voice or an uh, expert, you need to making them understand in a very different way. If things are traceable, it's much easier to uh, understand too. Of course, uh, when it's reasonable, uh, following our symbolic reasoning, that's uh, going to be uh, much easier to uh, explain. Task matter, and uh, there's a local and global 
and uh, that's model specific and also model agnostic. So I'm going to uh, give a little bit of uh, explanation. So a local explainability is uh, when you have one single cat picture and uh, you'll be able to explain this is a cat uh, by pointing out uh, the highest uh, firing neuron, which is the red uh, area, then uh, it's local explanation because you can explain this single cat picture why you recognize it as a cat. But uh, in a more global uh, explanation is uh, after you get so many cats, the system start to uh, being able to explain because I get pointy ear and also uh, furry hair, then uh, it's a cat. So the explanation, it become more global, more and more encompassing. Uh, there's also model specific technique that uh, the model itself have a built in capability of uh, explain, uh, explanation. Uh, like linear regression model is linear, it's very easy to explain and also you can do the prediction. Uh, decision tree is another uh, example that the model also building with uh, explanation. Uh, but most of the time, the, if the model cannot be explained directly within the model, that we run, we build a parallel model, that uh, the model do the prediction, yet the uh, other parallel magic is going to do the, uh, to do the explanation. This is uh, a very common technique being applied for uh, explainability, that model, ag model agnostic uh, technique. Uh, at the end, that, uh, now we'll be able to uh, classify any explainability model out there. So uh, sometimes uh, we just want to explain about the data, doesn't have any model, so that we can just use visualization technique so that you can actually see the data. Uh, human will be very easy to, uh, to uh, perceive it. But most of the time that uh, we are using the post-training explanation is uh, we have a model that cannot be explained by itself, like uh, deep learning that we build a uh, parallel model that are doing the explanation. Most of the technique like line uh, sharp is belongs to this uh, post, post uh, training explanation. But much I prefer is the building inherently interpretab uh, interpretable uh, model is the model itself can explain. Uh, very much like the rule based uh, system is uh, like that, decision tree is uh, very much like that. So uh, now uh, we be able to uh, class uh, classify all of the technique. Um, for us, uh, we have a uh, healthcare uh, enterprise, and I'm going to give you an example. And uh, the healthcare and uh, uh, healthcare enterprise usually come in with big data, with many different forms. So, uh, for example, they have a structured health record. Uh, the case description is going to be a natural language text. Uh, X-ray and CAT scan is an image. Uh, echocardiogram, which is a uh, video sequence, and uh, also doctor memos, uh, maybe just in uh, voice data. So they have many, many of these data. So we help them to build a machine learning pipeline using the traditional machine learning technique, a deep learning technique, uh, doing the evaluation. But of course, they have big data. Uh, we are talking about uh, enterprise that we need to actually build a much more powerful deployment pipeline in such a way that a parallel computing can uh, happen. Uh, at the end, the system itself is not going to live uh, by itself. You need to be connecting up with the bigger system. So you need to be security system integration layer that we need to take in care. But uh, after we uh, understand the enterprise actually require explainable uh, AI, then uh, we are going to add in interpretability in such a way that we have uh, explanation and also following the uh, regulation. And uh, I'm going to introduce a HIPAA rule explainability. So a HIPAA it's a it's very mouthful. It's Health Insurance Portability Accountability Act. And our client is in US, right? This is a US rule. It's actually governing how the uh, medical health record was being shared uh, between, uh, between the practitioner. So uh, they need to follow a set of rules. And i just give you an example of the rules. It's actually a little lawyer to really fully understand it, but uh, uh, I can briefly show it to you. It's uh, actually about the use and disclosure of uh, protected health information. You need to go in through every single one of these cross, sub clauses, uh, cross reference uh, section, and uh, you check every single uh, possibility to see whether the data is permit to transmit or not permit to transmit. So, uh, and we do an analysis, and uh, hopefully you cannot even read the tree that that single rule uh, it was being translated uh, into, let me zoom in a little bit, is uh, actually yeah, the, the uh, subsection, so on and on, okay. 
And uh, it's no point to uh, explain it yet uh, right here, but I just want to show you a complexity of a single rule is, uh, or is, uh, is, uh, pretty, is pretty daunting. Uh, so after doing the analysis, we uh, use the uh, backward training inference uh, strategy so that uh, we be able to uh, producing a pretty useful, explainable uh, rule-based uh, system. Uh, just like what I say, uh, old technology doesn't mean bad, but when it's applied in the right place, which is good. So uh, we translate people with Pollock. Uh, anybody know Pollock right here? Yeah, so uh, most likely we study in school, but uh, actually Pollock is pretty powerful and useful. And uh, not only me using it, it's actually I'm following some other researcher. They are, they are using Pollock. IBM is uh, definitely using Pollock to do uh, most of their uh, rule processing. So, um, so, so old technology doesn't mean bad, but you need to find the right uh, application. Right here, that I just show a uh, section of the Pollock program. So uh, when we run it, that uh, we, are, we have full, explain, full explainability coming out from the system. Uh, now, uh, at the end, that uh, we have human and AI, they, that they be able to talk with each other as long as we design system that let AI talking back to us, right? So uh, now we can say if AI could speak, we could understand it. Um, Hopefully I give you enough uh, sense, but uh, if you want to find more, and, and by the way, I will give the slide back to uh, Jericho, so uh, you'll be able to subscribe to the newsletter, then uh, you'll be able to download it. And uh, this is uh, coming from H2O, uh, H2O, which is the AI framework, and uh, they actually putting a whole department to uh, do explainable AI. Uh, guess why? Because they have many enterprise clients, they, cannot get the AI system deployed until it become explainable. And uh, there's a book. Um, I don't think there's uh, many books uh, exist uh, out there. This is such a thin book. I think you can download it online uh, called Introduction to Machine Learning Interpretability. That uh, you can uh, read all of the techniques uh, that's, uh, that's available. But after my talk, that you're actually having a framework to understand every single technique. Uh, uh, hopefully, this will help you. Uh, that's the end of my talk, and I uh, and I working for Joomla Group, and uh, I contribute a lot of uh, AI and blockchain uh, article on Joomla Group blog, and I run my own uh, own my hack blog that I'm running for a couple of years uh, right now. So I talk about all kind of things, and uh, this is all of my contact. So I, uh, please connect, and I love to uh, talk to you more. Okay, uh, any questions? <laughs> Let me start with the other place first. Anybody? Any questions? No questions. All right. It's so clear. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'll be the first woman to ask some question at least. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm a. I work on applications to make them user friendly. Yes. So more on the user experience side. Uh, I'm wondering if AI, AI has any connection with user experience design, where a user can actually see the benefit of AI and understand what what that means mm -hmm. um, in actual while they're using an application. Um, yes, uh, there's uh, definitely many learning systems they are actually applying the AI rules. Uh, uh, one of the obvious cases is uh, they have the rules uh, to actually assist uh, assist the user at different level. Uh, like what I say, yes, uh, depends on your user level. They provide explanation in a different way. So I see uh, application in the learning system is uh, actually applying uh, AI. But uh, in general, I'm, I'm not an uh, expert in this area, so I cannot uh, really tell you uh, other than the thing that I see. I really liked your presentation. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, yes. Uh, hi, I, I have a question about the uh, ex explainability of uh, machine learning techniques. Uh, my question is, uh, are they uh, explainable, you know, uh, at all? Because uh, that's, can we really reach to that goal? Um, uh, I think uh, technically, I think a lot of uh, techniques uh, in machine learning are designed in a way that uh, it's very, make them very hard to, to be to explain, mm -hmm. and also philosophically, um, 
you know, like when we, humans, we when we learn about r- to recognize, like kids learn to recognize cats and dogs. Uh, they they don't know why they you know, kids don't understand why they they are dogs and cats. They just rec- recognize it. Mm. So uh, yeah, that's my question. Thanks. Yeah. So uh, it's a big question. So I try to uh, answer a, a small part of it, and uh, unlikely that we'll be able to uh, touch on even the philosophical question of uh, how a kid actually get to learn the things uh, things about the world. So uh, read a little bit of uh, Lou Quick uh, Wittgenstein that I greatly uh, I greatly recommend. But uh, on the question is, uh, can uh, some of the deep learning model being able to uh, explain? And uh, take a look at the DARPA. Uh, DARPA actually spending billions of dollars. There's many research uh, institute right now is actually trying to make deep learning model explainable. And uh, they have various techniques. And I just uh, mentioned one is like the cat. Now it's not just uh, recognize the cat. It's actually giving the contextual uh, information so that the deep learning model not only do the prediction, but at the same time, throughout the neural network that actually uh, describing pointy ear and furry hair, so that uh, it actually coming out with explanation why certain uh, neurons get fired with a certain cat uh, feature coming out. So, uh, so it is uh, happening, and the uh, same thing with the self-driving uh, is, is people also trying to produce model, make self-driving explainable. Because uh, why do you turn left? Uh, why do you not turn right? Uh, why don't you hit this uh, pedestrian? Uh, and <laughs> and uh, this kind of thing that uh, they are actually generating a uh, model right now that go, go along in parallel because a deep learning model is, uh, is not uh, fully explainable by itself, but uh, it is actually running in parallel, uh, getting to be explainable. So, so uh, this is a relatively new research uh, area. And uh, also, it is the first interdisciplinary area that involve philosophy, uh, sociology, and uh, everybody uh, like a uh, linguistic. Uh, and uh, you can imagine, it's uh, going to be a very active research a- uh, area. So uh, if you are interested, uh, you should totally take a look at uh, explainable uh, AI. <laughs> All right. Anybody else? But it was funny that you gave the example with the lion. Uh, I don't know if you can build a system to explain me what my daughters are telling me. <laughs> I have no idea when they talk to them. <laughs> Hi. Um, not 100% sure on this, but most AI models are about correlation, right? Uh, so, how do you, so how do you know, like with that Amazon example you use, how do you know that it's biased against women? Because you don't really know cause, right? Uh, yes, and uh, actually this is uh, one of the big questions for uh, the uh, explainable uh, AI community. And actually explainable AI have come, come with dip- many different names. It's called interp- interpretable uh, uh, AI, uh, transparent AI, there's many names. But uh, if you go to uh, YouTube and search a bit, and uh, they actually try to uh, build a model, uh, especially detecting whether sex uh, uh, women or men actually important for the network. It's not only predicting the results, but at the same time, uh, for certain uh, biases, they would like to train a network that is going along with the deep learning network in such a way that uh, they know the prediction have nothing to do with uh, with uh, sex sexual bias. So, uh, so uh, there's uh, there's uh, quite a few new research coming out, and uh, just like what I say, it's a brand new area. Uh, people are very interested in uh, getting it explainable. Otherwise, enterprise system will not uh, deploy uh, machine learning. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah.